interesting to uh, speculate on why David chose exactly this film and what are the you know rhymes and reasons for this uh, for, for, for this choice but we have an incredible opportunity to ask uh, David himself who is with us now from the room and he will be in conversation with the director with Christy Puyo and I thank them both for the time that they took uh, to be with us today. David? Thank you, Valentin, and thank you, Christy. Um, yes, so this is uh, um, when I was uh, when I received your question, Valentin, from your uh, uh, cinema team there about the choice for a movie. Uh, this was this is always for someone who's not going to cinema that often is always going to be art question but um i remembered uh, around the year 2005 2006 probably when i had been a few years into my practice um that uh, the work of christie stayed with me or this particular film and i'm not going to claim that i know so much more about his other work and i was uh, wondering if uh, my god i have to be careful that i don't propose this film based upon a vague memory of many years ago more than a decade so <laughs> i was hesitant in uh, uh, looking at uh, again at the death of mr lazarescu to find out whether this really was the case but this one thing that had fascinated me always um, was there or whether maybe it was just, a, you know, a fiction in my mind um, about something that I wanted to see there. So what was it? Um, in fact, it, what it certainly not was not was the, let's say, the handheld style of the camera. I think I had completely forgotten about that somehow over the years. So you have to imagine, Christy, I didn't see your movie for about 15 years. Yeah, I had seen it and it had always stayed with me as a, as a memory. But it was it was quite nailed in 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 my mind for reasons that I am even wondering if you are going to see them or agree with them, or maybe you will find whether they are completely marginal. Uh, but in any case, uh, they're the following. So there's a, there's a name in the title of the movie and there's the subject of uh, the person of Mr. Lazarescu, who appears to be, uh, let's say, at the center of the story or at the center of the situation. And who gradually, in two ways, uh, this disappears from the composition. Um, as the film unfolds and as uh, this journey processes from one hospital to another, and, and I did look at it again recently, um, of course, you uh, the main character... I would say becomes deluded, but that's not that's not how I would describe it. I would say he is very subtly erased from the cent from the foreground, and he's being is being picked up by uh, the stories of the doctor, where obviously the doctor thinks of himself as the most important, or this one doctor, the most important uh, character in the world, and there are more people of that like that. Uh, so he's being he's being uh, replaced by something else, by many ephemeralia around him. Then that's the narrative line. And then there's also, and there I'm hesitating, but I think it's happening as well. There's also literally composition part where the figure of Lazarescu uh, becomes more and more horizontal. And you forget about his verticality. You forget about him being a person able to stand on his um, two feet and to move around autonomously. 
So he's being carried around, and as he's being carried around, he becomes a weight, and he literally disappears from the composition as the film nears the end. Then by the very end, he's basically like a baby, being wrapped out of clothes and into new clothes, and I believe that's where it ends. And um, he looks like a big baby being treated by two women, naked, vulnerable, and and I believe that's where uh, the film ends. So at that time, around the year 2005, 2006, I had just made a work titled The Bordeaux Piece, which was filmed in a house of uh, built by Ram Colas for a wealthy uh, woman and her husband in, in overlooking the city of Bordeaux. But it was quite a cruel story about this house. And I met this woman and she invited me there and she asked, couldn't you do something? And so I made a, I made a film which lasted uh, 13 hours and 45 minutes, I believe and which is uh, more than 70 short movies of 10 minutes. Um, and why do I connect this, the Bordeaux piece to Lazarescu? Is because um, what I so much admired in your work, Christy, was the fact that so subtly, um, without actually shaking the subject matter of Lazarescu out of the composition, you managed to erase him. and. Um, he dies out almost uh, like a character um, that uh, that would be whose limbs are falling away uh, as a lepros. Uh, it's you don't feel the pain immediately, but it's just erased little by little, and before you know, he's no longer there. And uh, this is something that I was looking for in several works, among others, the Bordeaux pieces that I try to replace what's happening in the foreground, which in pictorial terms, but also in cinema, we know as, which usually occupied by the actor uh, um, and about uh, dialogue, and to erase that and replace it with um, what's usually the, the, the witness, uh, which in my case was the landscape, and to give gradual uh, podium to, um, to the landscape. So there was the Bordeaux piece, there was also Olympia. But uh, to sum up this, um, this has always stayed with me as something that I found incredibly powerful. Yeah. Um, was that you had this entire universe uh, uh, in Bucharest, uh, all these things happening, dramas bigger than the other. And obviously the death of Mr. Lazarescu is the smallest thing occurring at that moment. And without, uh, actually without changing the film, you, you, <laughs> you manage to uh, let him drop out in a way which is incredibly subtle. Um, so, but I'm not aware, I'm not, I don't know if that is a fiction of my mind or um, it's probably not that important. Uh, but it was of great meaning to me at that time. Um, and then I could end actually by saying that I didn't see many films afterwards, except uh, for the rare uh, film festival visits. Um, so I'm not a great uh, cinema connoisseur at all. Yeah. So... Is there a question? <laughs> no, there's no question. You say it's just a... Uh, uh, no, no, from my side, there's not a question, no. Because, uh, uh, you know, when you have love, you don't have, have to ask why do you love me. <laughs> it's just, uh, I, I, I was aware of, uh, of what it meant to me. And I'm not asking you to, uh, to confirm whether this is the case or not. Um, but, uh, well, that's the reason why I spontaneously um, selected your work to be uh, screened. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. 
I'm happy with this. I mean, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, it's an old film uh, and Mr. Lazarescu already died. You know, for me as a filmmaker, I, I am in a different dimension right now. So looking back to the film itself, I'm uh, quite critical about it, but I'm still critical of, uh, towards the reaction of most of the people who wrote about it, like, you know, most of them wrote about the, uh, this film as a, as a, as a uh, harsh critic of the healthcare system, but it is a film about an old man who dies, and it is in the title itself, and it is in the film itself. And mm -hmm. I believe uh, you, you, you're right. Uh, there is a... Um, a resonance uh, between uh, what you thought and you felt and uh, the film itself because one of the propositions uh, one of uh, the triggers of, of this story was the fact that I'm uh, being haunted from long time now uh, by the idea of dying and uh, I noticed afterwards that uh, uh, whatever I do, I'm um, falling in this trap, you know, thinking of, about my uh, personal death, uh, my personal um, exitus, you know, and um, uh, thinking of, of the film now and, um, of what you just said, uh, it is true that uh, Lazarevko is 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 losing uh, a lots of things, and um, they are being planted uh, there uh, from the script. Most of them, uh, like you know, at the beginning of the film, we learn that his wife died already some years mm -hmm. ago. His daughter is living in Canada and she's leaving the house, she's leaving the home and she's leaving behind him the cats very dear to him. And he's just saying this, this is a statement there in an ambulance and he's talking about this fact. And uh, knowing pretty well that the neighbors hated the cats and little by little at a certain point point in the film he's losing his identity card and uh, uh, the paramedic uh, finds the cards ah, listen, listen. so he's, he's losing like his social identity somehow symbolically and later on he's losing the speech and then he's mm -hmm. losing the conscious somehow not I mean the the the, the, uh, the conscious state uh, is going to mm -hmm. be and then he's losing the clothes, I mean, uh, his identity is being attacked from the, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, positions somehow. And then uh, he's losing the hair, like, you know, uh, not like as Samson is losing the hair, you know, from the, uh, from this myth of Samson and Delilah you have in the Bible. And then he's losing uh, his life. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, when we worked on, on it with Rezvan, we had this talk and then we start uh, searching for uh, meaning uh, above this common and casual story that just happened in, in, in Bucharest. It, it happened. Uh, a very similar story. Uh, um, the difference is that the paramedic left uh, the, the patient to the street and he died in the street. And I didn't want to to have this. I wanted to have a, a common, uh, casual story. And the stories like Lazarescu are many in Romania. And I believe not just mm -hmm. in Romania. So uh, that was the, was the reason that I, I decided, you know, after the talkings I had with Rosvan to uh, name the character Lazarescu and to call the film as such. I mean, just... and and just to have at least at, at, at the level of his identity uh, a sort of uh, promise of mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, resurrection, you know, 
mm -hmm. death does not exist, you know. So this is the the best thing we could do with a story that had to be uh, a part of the everyday life. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we cannot say much about the people who are dying, but at mm -hmm. least we can hope. So mm -hmm. the, the character that was in uh, uh, um, uh, in in in. in uh, from our culture, from our Christian culture, this was the the, the, the best um, um, character to to superpose the best name of a possible character that we could superpose on uh, our character, meaning uh, Lazar, Lazar from the Bible. Yes, yeah. So maybe that's uh, it's interesting that you speak about the idea of resurrection because it's probably possible precisely because you um, in the way you say goodbye to the character halfway in the film <laughs> it's actually pretty early already in the film you, he, he's uh, 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 he, he loses his attributes and and therefore it it doesn't allow for a dramatic or tragic death um, the death is being observed and it's being, uh, in fact, you know, <laughs> well prepared. You can see what's going to, how this is going to end. And unfortunately, it happens so many times over in daily, daily life. Um, and by having this void, I call it a void now or an emptiness, or I would say maybe also a lack of, um, a lack of rage, maybe, huh? Mm -hmm. over 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 his death by having that uh, you, you you i can imagine a sense of resurrection um not of him but of uh, uh, of us looking or, or the people the spectator looking at figuring out what what to pay attention to next um as he's gone i mean he's a goner from the beginning and uh Lola. Yeah, yeah. And why? Maybe a question. Although, you know, I'm, it's not my kind of question, but maybe a question. You were quite young when you uh, made this film uh, about death and about the question of death. Um, is that something that uh, is still ongoing, or did it change something for you? It didn't uh, actually. No, it is uh, just. Uh, I don't know if I was young. I was. Uh, yes, I was young uh, for sure. But I, I, I wasn't as young uh, as it appears. Uh, anyway, I went through some kind of uh, chain of experience related to the healthcare system in Romania and uh, at a certain point I thought of uh, you know of uh, leaving this uh, planet uh, I was I, I had a very serious uh, problem um, and I so I spent some time in a hospital but anyway it is more related to the fact that I grew up in a hospital somehow because my father used to work in a very big hospital in Bucharest so because we were coming from a poor family, my mother was a teacher and my father uh, uh, working in this administration of this uh, big hospital, uh, they couldn't afford to pay uh, uh, a babysitter. So we, we are three, three brothers, two brothers and one sister. So usually either my, bro my father took us at the hospital, either my mother took us at her school. So uh, we spend a lot of time in the hospital and we used to eat in the hospital and... Uh, be friend with uh, um, a lot of uh, people working in the hospital, being doctor or nurses and so on. But so it, it it's it's a kind of a familiar uh, environment. It didn't change my reaction when I fall uh, ill uh, after mm -hmm. finishing my first film. I, it came as a surprise, you know, when I when I fall. You know, so little by little, I start. I mean, all these engines, uh, uh, unconscious engines that are triggering the um, 
like a uh, 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 Romanian writer used to say, uh, the Russian questions, meaning the very serious questions regarding the life and death. So mm -hmm. it happened uh, at that moment. So, and then little by little, we, 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 uh, uh, took the decision to uh, attack frontally this uh, problem. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, at that time, I, 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 I had a lo long talks with Razvan, and uh, it was it was this opportunity to make another step and uh, make another film. But making another film is just um, uh, stupid. I mean, it is not it's not a reason to. Uh, add another film to the films that exist are already so many films. It has mm -hmm. to have a meaning. Uh, so uh, it had to be personal. So mm -hmm. I, I had to do my best. Now I don't know if I if I get if I got to the point of uh, delivering uh, what tortured me during that period because it was uh, really a change but after the Lazarescu uh, regarding the relationship that I'm, I'm um, feeding with uh, these questions that uh, are having to do with um, uh, life and death and afterlife and uh, uh, God and uh, these very serious questions um, regarding this I just um, little by little I I, I I realized later on that I turned my back to our uh, my my, my um, the old me the 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 the, the previous me the mm -hmm. what I, something changed but it didn't change like I mean like uh, it, it little by little something changed uh, uh, changed uh, but. Um, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is also I understood you are um, you have both practice of, of a painter and a filmmaker, and um, maybe it's not uninteresting to uh, just pause for a moment in the different dynamics of uh, production. Mm -hmm. um, let's say studio practice being alone in in your place mm -hmm. uh, from morning to evening, if you wish versus a production of a movie which is yeah. really like i can measure the gray hair or the hair that i lose uh, to the work i make in production in film yeah uh, and with with uh, with when in winter time when i draw mainly draw and sometimes paint it's like the opposite there i can measure the hair that grows back <laughs> Uh, from you know the relaxing and the happiness in, in fact of, of being on your own so there is this I imagine you I don't know what is it a year two years three years before a film is uh, is finalized and I when I was a beginning artist I really dreaded uh, the system of film production because of that I couldn't imagine I knew a few filmmakers who were waiting for five years uh, like I'm, I'm befriended with a Canadian filmmaker or artist, actually, who spent more than 10 years waiting for a Portuguese film budget to, re to be released. And after more than 10 years, he was able to, to make the work um, on location, which took him about one and a half weeks, I believe. <laughs> and... and you know, this, this, I could never, uh, as a young artist, I couldn't imagine how on earth can you survive through that. Uh, but I find myself many years later uh, spending, my maximum is, is 16 years to make a single video installation. Wow. Uh, and the average is one and a half years. <laughs> so I think you know mo much about that, uh, those differences uh, as well, don't you? Yeah. It's true. It, uh, it's extremely painful, but uh, in the same time, there is a very serious test. Little by little, you are uh, um, measuring things differently. I mean, uh, you tend to believe that what you are on the point of 
creating slash producing is very important. And then little by little, because of this period of time when you are searching for the money and looking for this and that, like it takes uh, for me uh, at least four year, four years from uh, between one project and another. Uh, it's plenty of time. It's plenty of time to think and rethink uh, your the choices you've made. And uh, um, usually, it is it is. Uh, I mean, the answer is not a good one. It's not uh, uh, you are not happy. Uh, I mean, for. At the end of these four or five years, that at the moment you start the, the, the actual production, I start when I start the actual production of the film, shooting and so on, uh, rehearsing, I'm on a point of changing a lot of things. I'm not happy mm -hmm. at all with what I wrote like four years ago. Because life is changing and I, I do believe it's the best thing that uh, might happen to an artist. Being being entering in resonance with life itself and allowing yourself to make the changes, like you know, I, I believe it is the consequence of uh, of painting. This is one of the consequences because when you are painting, like Brack used to say, uh, that painting is in my head, but in uh, quite quite uh, uh, um, gloomy and uh, uh, when. I, when I start to paint, I'm in a way uh, looking for the painting, uh, trying to find out what this painting is about because I cannot see it properly. It's not like a project like for a BMW when you are building uh, the engine. You have to follow mm -hmm. everything, I mean, at, at, at the comma. And then in, in when you paint, it's not the same thing. And when you are uh, making a film, I believe you have to allow yourself to get closer and closer to what uh, um, jasmine might be, you know, uh, improvising and uh, but still uh, uh, not forgetting the, the shore and uh, getting back home to the shore from time to time and then. I don't know. There are all these thing, things mixed up, but we we are lucky here in Romania because most of us we have our production house, and we are not um, uh, working under the pressure of a, of, a, of a producer who is imposing things because otherwise it would be mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah, yeah. That makes me think of. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I should say that, but. Two artists, Philip Pareno and Douglas Gordon, years ago made this film about uh, Zinedine Zidane, the mm -hmm. I portrait of, uh, I forgot what the title was. And uh, just like I, 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 one of my, what I can never prevent myself doing is looking for punctu in, in a photograph or in a situation. I'm also looking for the producer sometimes, yeah. And you can see the producer coming in um, towards like three quarter of the film. <laughs> mm -hmm. The producer is coming in and certainly must have said, "Look, guys, this is not going anywhere. We have to do something to make this viable for a, a big audience." Yeah, and then you can see literally, you can see the intervention of the producer. Uh, and not only there, but now I'm really gossiping. I'm being very nasty. But I remember Steve McQueen's 12 Years a Slave has also a producer moment like that, very much at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so finding the producer moment is, uh, I mean, I can imagine if you can avoid it at all costs, you have to <laughs> stay away from this situation. Yeah, um, it is not a matter of... Uh, uh, how to say, how to put it, uh, um, amour propre. It is not a matter of um, um, narcissism, you know, mm -hmm. not this kind of repulsion. It is just uh, um, the, the obsession of delivering uh, your, of testifying properly and to the end it's a, it's a kind of an obsession of for, for telling the truth uh, which is mm -hmm. something that will never take place actually mm -hmm. 
But if you are going to let yourself be driven by your image, and uh, if you are letting yourself, I believe that if you are letting, as an artist, if you are letting yourself being driven by your uh, the, the image uh, that you are building about yourself, you are very far from the truth. So mm. this, uh, uh, the, 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 this pulsion, this uh, 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 need for telling the truth is coming with a lot of bad consequences, but you have to assume it. Like, for example, after the film in Romania, a lot of people were saying that uh, the film is de destroying the image of Romania abroad. So this is quite common for most of the films from the, uh, this so-called uh, Romanian uh, wave. But it mm -hmm. is a risk, and it's not a big risk. Being critical, mm -hmm. I believe it is a part of your your uh, destiny as an artist. If you, as an artist, you are if you are if you cannot be the child in Hans Christian Andersen's uh, uh, fairy tale about the the uh, emperor who's naked, the, then then you better quit. I believe it's mm -hmm. very important to behave uh, in in a, in, in a uh, uh, relation with uh, the, mm -hmm. the truth, whatever that might be, whatever that mm -hmm. means. Because it is mm -hmm. anyway you are in a position of defining and redefining it. It is something that you will never define. It's not a matter of philosophy. It is a matter of being at the present time. I don't know how to explain it. I know how to be true to myself, but I cannot put in words what and from where it's coming. Mm -hmm. Because it's a state of uh, 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 it's a, the state of truth. It's having a lot to do with the lack of control, complete lack of control, and allow yourself to be. And I don't mm -hmm. know how to, to, to tell this story. I mean, I don't know how to tell the others. I don't know mm -hmm. how to tell to myself, but I just mm -hmm. noticed that when I am, and it happens from time to time, a very short, very short period of time, like a matter of seconds, and this is something that I, I, I would like to catch in the, my films, but I mm -hmm. cannot. And just here and there, even in Lazarusco, it's here and there and there. And mm -hmm. the, most of it is just uh, construction, rational building, and control. Mm -hmm. and but the in between spaces of Mr. Lazarusco are very beautiful. They are very, um, they are also invisible. Huh? I mean, the, the people who criticized you for uh, not putting up the right image of Romania the way they would have liked it. Mm -hmm probably forgot um, to mention or to think about the fact that actually <laughs> you put up the best image you could by, uh, and it's always the question of who is looking, who do I want, who do we want to be perceived as looking at? Do we actually want to promote something um, or is it the beauty of looking and is it the beauty of seeing things happening? Um, yeah, but that's always going to be, and in fact, maybe also, uh, maybe after 15 to 20 years, it's then about time that this layer, this uh, propaganda layer, I will call it, is erased. Yeah, maybe it's not not anymore about the health health system, about um, uh, dysfunctional, because I read in one Italian commentary on the on the healthcare in, in Bucharest, they said, oh, it's quite awful in Italy, this would never happen. I mean, sorry, but in Italy, I can imagine very well this to happen, um, or in France, or in, you know, it's, it's, it's not about, it's not about, uh, let's say, the uh, uh, that which they want to have others being seen, that's it's so always the, the, the difficulty is the question of who is looking. Yeah? Is it is the person looking the one who, like in the uh, when Hitler spoke about art, yeah, it was he was very explicit to his ministers. Hey, he had a very clear idea of how he wanted others to look at the art, and they were always speaking about you know they will stand there in the faraway future looking at the past. And this glorious light will shine upon us. 
Um, but in film, people often forget that the glorious light is actually that duration, this temporality that is happening. And, and, and that is where, where, uh, where I see uh, beauty. And I, in fact, I've, I'm very, I have a tendency of forgetting about the narrative lines almost immediately. Um, I'm not sure, Valentin, if we can open up to questions <laughs> for Christy, uh, if that is technically possible or if you have uh, something to ask. Well, actually, actually, thank you for your beautiful back and forth. And we have five minutes maybe before we have to wrap this up. Unfortunately, I think we would listen and listen. And of course, I personally also have a million questions to Christy and David. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just ask one and maybe one from the audience if anyone's interested. Uh, so my question is um, about this, this criticism that you mentioned, Christy, the criticism, mm -hmm. the criticism that uh, your work is a critique of the healthcare system. I wonder if uh, viewers from, let's say, post-socialist former Soviet bloc see this movie very differently from the Western Europeans. Because, uh, I mean, to this day, I think Lazarescu is my neighbor. I mean, he lives mm -hmm. next door. This guy lives next door to me. And, uh, and to this day, well, the hospitals in Bucharest in 2005 were much better than the hospitals in Moscow in 2005. I can tell you that uh, with certainty because I've been to them. Um, mm -hmm. And um, there's this level of uh, level of engagement in the texture of reality that you show, and this uh, reality is very um, dear and near to to us. I think to the Russian viewers, but it's maybe it could look as something exotic for the Western audiences. Or am I completely wrong in that? David, maybe you, you, you should ask, you should answer this. Um, <clears throat> well, briefly, um, I would say, like you said, Valentin, uh, is that no, there is, <laughs> there, there are not these uh, typical hooks uh, that would be so typically Romanian or so particularly uh, to this or that system that they wouldn't be. No, quite the contrary. I think it's a very legible situation, um, which I, anyone who has some kind of memory could imagine having been in, um, regardless of you know what part of the world you are in and what healthcare system you are in. Um, or that's the way it, it it comes across for me. I believe, yeah, I believe you're right. And I believe it is something that is having more to do with what is uh, um, um, human in ourselves. What is uh, that thing that we called uh, love for yeah. our fellow man, our neighbor. So uh, it is having nothing to do or very little to do with technology. You know, usually uh, here in Romania, people are complaining, uh, used to complain about the lack of technology, but it is not about this. It's about love and uh, care for your fellow mm -hmm. man. It is uh, more than it appeared to be. It appears to be, even if the the Western uh, society, the Western world, is being uh, so, uh, uh, you know, um, in in uh, at a different level of development uh, regarding uh, all these technologies uh, meant for helping. Uh, uh, people for uh, um, saving them. Uh, it is still about love. It is not about, uh, I mean, it is, I, I, I do believe that uh, the film I made, it is a film about the lack of love still. It is not about uh, the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, maybe a question.
thank you so much uh, for this uh, little lecture, uh, Q&A. And uh, actually, Christy, I'm a big admirer of you and your films, and uh, thank you also for them. And uh, I'm, I'm a film school student. Actually, I was, because there was an incident, because I watched your Malm Croc, and I was so <laughs> struck by it. So I was so inspired and wanted to create a project uh, a little bit connected to it, inspired by it. And um, in my film school, my master, my teacher didn't understand my ideas, so I decided to keep and uh, uh, okay. even now when I was listening to you, I have learned a little, a, a lot more than during half a year in a film school. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you for your bravery in your films. And uh, uh, as I have this unique possibility to talk to you, I wanted to ask you a question that was uh, torturing me during these uh, uh, days uh, spent in uh, creative processes. So uh, as far as I know, you are a person who is uh, deeply connected to words, to uh, philology, to texts. And uh, I would ask, at the same time, uh, your movies, they're really, uh, they are rich in visuals, in images, in this uh, feeling in image in in moving so it's dif it's difficult to talk about this in English but I wanted to ask you how do they how do you cope with this how do you um, uh, how do you uh, befriend your images in your brain with words and again with uh, images in your films how how these creative processes happen to you how how do you perform this. I, I hope this was uh, understandable enough. Sorry. Thank you. No, it's understandable, uh, but it's uh, 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 either a, a very short uh, answer, either a very long answer. It's very hard to find the the, the right uh, precise duration for an answer as serious uh, as the question. Is. It's a Russian question, yes. Sounds. No, but it's a very serious question. Uh, uh, actually, this is the, the this is the uh, the position of the director. He has to find the right way, uh, the right balance between what is being said and what is being seen. But uh, to find it is it's it's not. I mean, it's. Um, I don't know how to say uh, how to say. There's no secret in it. There is. Uh, uh, I'm. I am as a director. I am uh, the consequence of uh, uh, my 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 readings when I was young, uh, little by little, uh, towards today, and the consequence of the fact that I studied painting. And so uh, I don't have a problem with the image. I, I know what I want to have, and I I don't have a problem with the words because, like unconsciously. I, I submitted myself, I capitulate uh, uh, in front of uh, my models, being uh, those models uh, Dostoevsky or Camus or Ernesto Sabat. Or, see, so I, it is not like questions that I'm asking myself. What I tend, what I try to avoid, it is uh, the... Um, uh, um, um, I, I believe, uh, let's put it this way, I believe that uh, Hitchcock is right, was right when he was saying that the, the, the spectator is from far much more intelligent than the, than the director. And I believe this to be true. So what I try to do is to not forget that the, the spectator knows and uh, to avoid being explicit about it. And that's why this is one of my objections to the death of Mr. Lazarescu, because I felt uh, like, uh, I don't know, and I watched it like 10 years ago, that I, I've been too explicit. Too many words to, to say. Uh, uh, so uh, maybe I, I, I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, uh, this was my feeling. So what I'm trying to do is to respect 
the audience. But the audience, it does not exist, they are just individuals. So my the, the, the spectator with, with whom I am entering in dialogue is a very intelligent one. I, I thought that it's like this. So the, from here, the censorship, the, the, the scissors. I'm cutting here, 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 because he will understand and he does, does not hear it. He is going to see it and etc., etc., etc. Thank you. I think it was a beautiful answer to a beautiful question. And with this, we conclude this small, small introduction. Thank you very much, Christy. Thank you very much, David, for putting us all together here. And, uh, well, enjoy the death of Mr. Lazarescu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. <laughs>